Okay, uh, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be giving a talk on the uh, mutual information estimation. It is uh, um, intended more as a maybe an overview of the um, uh, of the area, and in particular, I included uh, basically uh, a wide review of the uh, different estimators and uh, uh, some theory about uh, the difficulties and uh, some recent um, advances, or uh, well, not advances, but like some recent progress. Uh, so the latest, uh, basically the latest uh, developments uh, in, in, the, uh, in this field. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so first uh, I'll briefly introduce the uh, idea of mutual information. And it is a fundamental um, quantity in uh, machine learning and uh, uh, information theory. It's basically a measure of uh, the mutual dependence between two variables. So here the mathematical formula is the IXY is the expectation under the joint, uh, under their joint distribution PXY, uh, the log of PXY divided by PXPY. And it can, it has many different uh, other like uh, forms. They're all equivalent. Uh, the first one is the KL divergence between the joint PXY and the, the basically the product of the marginals PXPY as can be seen directly uh, from this, uh, from the expectation form. Another uh, form is basically you can reduce uh, one of the marginals PX or PY uh, from the denominator and uh, basically um, reduce to this kind of ratio, the log ratio between the conditional and um, say like uh, PX given Y divided by PX. And another kind of, um, form is basically um, by the second line is uh, easy to see that uh, uh, mutual information is also the entropy, uh, so the unconditional entropy of X minus the entropy of X given Y. So basically uh, you can think of uh, X, Y as the reduction in the entropy uh, when you condition on Y. And uh, so here, like on the, on the bottom there's a, uh, uh, Vayan graph from uh, Wikipedia, which uh, may be uh, helpful for this, uh, for the illustration. Basically the uh, mutual information is kind of the uh, intersection uh, of, the, of the two uh, circles and uh, the kind of the joint, uh, basically the union is like H of X, Y. And uh, you have basically the difference, uh, basically the, this pink circle itself is H, X and uh, the basically the area excluding um, IXY is the conditional entropy HX. And so this has many applications in machine learning. Uh, the first one, um, like the maybe the first to think of is like the information bottleneck principle, uh, where basically you want to maximize the mutual information between Z and Y, where basically Z is some kind of uh, representation of the data X uh, that you learn using theta. And Y is the task uh, that uh, you want to achieve. And so basically you want to make sure that uh, Z keeps a lot of information about Y, uh, but uh, basically that, and, and that it does not uh, retain too much information from X. So basically uh, try to learn some kind of representation from theta such that the representation Z uh, is very suitable for the task Y, but uh, not uh, but remembering uh, basically the least as possible. This is the kind of the information bottleneck maybe you see uh, very frequently in the uh, context of variational also groups, but also in other uh, contexts as well. And uh, somewhat a contrary kind of uh, idea is the kind of uh, InfoMax principle uh, in the simplest form. Uh, is like in representation learning, again, you have, you want to learn a uh, representation G, which uh, maps uh, basically X data, data X from uh, basically from the data manifold to, to a kind of a low dimensional uh, representation. And you want basically to uh, maximize the kept uh, information uh, using this um, uh, representation G. 
And it has also been used to say, measure the quality of generating models. And uh, so for instance, this uh, GILBO paper. Uh, so first, it, uh, this, uh, this might be a very uh, intuitive kind of uh, um, comparison, um, which basically means that uh, GILBO is kind of an estimate of the mutual information uh, between the, uh, the latent in the generating model Z and it's um, uh, basically its output uh, from the generating model P, X, given Z. And so the joint P, X, Z is defined by the prior P, Z times P, X, given Z. And so the mutual information here basically means how dependent is the output on uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the latent code Z. And uh, as a uh, claim in the paper that basically these are, I think, are three different, I think, GANs. Uh, but um, basically, on um, and, and they achieve actually the same fit score on the celeb, I think on, on the on the faces data set, uh, but that their mutual information uh, characteristics are very different. And so, for instance, this first one like outputs are pretty much uh, very different faces uh, given the very similar uh, dating codes, but the uh, last one um, basically outputs very very. Um, similar, so pretty much the same phases uh, consistently given a code C. So basically this means that uh, X is very dependent on Z um, for, for the um, for pulse C. And here is another uh, kind of the same, from the same paper, another plot, uh, which basically they're claiming that basically from the mutual information, it's possible to even get uh, some sense of the uh, quality of the model, not just basically how dependent things are. And uh, they, are, they, they claim that basically it's by analyzing the mutual information directly, not even considering what the true data distribution is, it's possible to basically single out some uh, um, very bad or you know uh, ill behaving generation models. And uh, basically, so it seems that the mutual information shouldn't be too small, which means that um, the dependence, so, so X, the output X doesn't really depend on Z. And also it shouldn't be very high uh, because it, um, it may uh, indicate uh, that it's oversensitive and over-dependent on Z. And uh, here's another paper uh, called the uh, Evaluating Velocity Compression Rates of the generative Models, which uh, basically uses kind of the uh, same idea in a, a similar idea, I should say, uh, but instead focus on like the rate distortion curves I won't go into the uh, too much detail, uh, but uh, basically this is a, um, a use of the uh, estimators uh, that uh, we'll talk about later. And uh, that uh, basically focuses on uh, the quality of generative models, but from maybe a uh, perspective of uh, compression. And so, uh, after these applications, now we want to say, have an estimate of the mutual information in practice. But uh, when we don't know uh, the, basically all of the distributions, PXY, PX, and PY uh, in the formula here, actually mutual information estimation is very difficult. So in practice, we commonly encounter the following scenarios. And uh, for all of them, we assume we have uh, samples from PXY. And here is like a taken more in a general sense. So basically, PXY can be anything, uh, not just maybe from a probabilistic uh, or from a generative model point of view, but uh, just uh, any distribution PXY. So it's possible that we know PX and PY given X. So this is not sufficient because we don't know PY. And uh, pretty much when you have PY given X, uh, again, we're calling the kind of the entropy. Uh, formula is basically entropy of y minus the entropy of y given x. So basically, we can't compute the uh, entropy of y given only px and py. Given x. So this is a uh, basically missing py here. And the second case is basically we only know basically one of px and uh, px given y. So we only know basically one thing. And the third, basically the mo most difficult thing is um, 
basically we have no idea about the densities uh, at all. And so because of these um, scenarios and, uh, and in practice, uh, usually people construct uh, lower or upper bounds uh, using these kind of variational or contrastive ideas um, that are usually also uh, basically uh, stochastic uh, estimators. And uh, we'll describe some of them uh, next. Uh, the first one is uh, basically uh, the, the, the first, this, is correspond, this corresponds to the second case where we know one of the uh, Px and Ps given y. And recall that the neutral information formula is in the first line. So when we know one of them, uh, the key idea is to use a variational approximation uh, for the other, for the unknown uh, density. So basically assume that Px sigma y is known in this case, then we basically use a variation of Qx to approximate Px. And basically by writing out, by, by adding a Qx in both the uh, numerator and the denominator and basically uh, using uh, some kind of um, KL, um, basically there's also another KL divergence uh, which uh, is omitted here. Uh, so this kind of inequality appears. And so you get an upper bound on the mutual information uh, defined on the right-hand side. This bound is called the rate in a VAE kind of context, but uh, the, the kind of uh, notation is different. So here, PY would be the kind of the distribution on the data. And then here, is of px given y, this is usually say q of z given the data. So you can say q z given y, but q is the encoder. And here, usually this is instead p of z, so which is the prior. And this gives, as we see here, an upper bound on the mutual information between the data y and the data called z, which uh, which comes from the kind of um, uh, the, the pipeline of having a data and using an encoder to uh, encode data. And this, because it's an upper bound, usually uh, in the mutual, like in, in a kind of information bottleneck principle, we want to keep the rate low. And so we want basically to compress um, the data um, by lowering the rate, uh, but uh, at the same time, not harming the kind of uh, some downstream tasks such as uh, reconstruction. So this is called the rate in the VAE kind of context. Uh, but uh, so when uh, Px is known, then uh, the kind of idea is to use a variation of Qx given y. So basically the same idea, but uh, using a different variation of distribution. And this is called the barber article lower bound. And uh, so from a kind of similar idea, you get the IBA lower bound, which is a lower bound of mutual information. And the form is basically uh, the same, but with Q in place of P uh, for the numerator. So it's Q, X, Y, y or Px. So that's uh, the end of the uh, basically um, when um, we have at least one um, transport density. But uh, many practitioners want to know the mutual information when you only have samples. So there are no uh, tractable density at all. And in this case, the kind of, uh, I think the simple derivation here is usually that instead we consider an energy-based variational family Qx given y that has already this Px term in here, right? So this family is defined by basically Px times the exponential of f x y. And when we plug this in to the uh, barber article lower bound, we see the px uh, cancels, and uh, we are left with uh, basically the expectation of f x y under the joint minus the expectation of uh, basically the uh, normalizing constant c y here. And this is called the unnormalized barber island bound. And the optimal critic in this case is basically uh, the 
uh, probability, the log of Py uh, given x plus some um, uh, constant. And we can see if we plug this uh, critic into this variational family, we see we precisely recover that this is Px and this is Py given x. And when it's normalized, this is precisely the uh, posterior Py, uh, Px given y. So basically when we have, uh, as we see, if this is the posterior Px given y, then the variational family is correct. So uh, uh, the mutual information is also the uh, correct mutual information. And by uh, genesis inequality, uh, we also recover from here, the dos curvara than a lower bound, which only changes the second term. Uh, so basically it only moves the log outside. And it is another, it is a further lower bound of the UBA lower bound. Yeah. So just one step here. And uh, the optimal critic in this case is, is pretty much already the uh, log ratio. And uh, so this is, this is still kind of the, from the same vein because PY is like one of the constants basically, right? So because log PY only depends on the uh, Y. So this can be incorporated in this context. So it's a particular case of the uh, optimal critic uh, for the BA bound. However, basically both of these bounds are still intractable because of this uh, normalizing constant. So to form a tractable bound, uh, basically we want to trans uh, transform this kind of log, log of Z here, which is intractable uh, into something which is attractable. And uh, for that, uh, basically um, people propose to use the, uh, basically the ventral uh, conjugate, um, which is, uh, well, in a slightly different form is basically an inequality which basically says log of x is less than or equal to x divided by a plus log a minus one, where x and a are both positive. And so if we just plug this into the, uh, the first bound, the UBA bound on the previous slide, uh, we recall the tractable UBA bound uh, given here. And notice that uh, in this case, um, we don't have a, um, any kind of log uh, of, of a normalizing constant that we cannot compute. So all of these terms uh, can be computed um, in a kind of unbiased manner, but at, a, at, a, at the cost of learning an additional a y. And in a particular case, uh, if we simply let a y uh, to be the basically to be e, uh, then uh, this also recovers another uh, mutual information bond called the when Wainwright Jordan uh, lower bound, uh, basic, basically it's the uh, same first term uh, minus, well, if you plug E in, you cover precisely this, basically the, the second term cancels, right? And still, but, but uh, maybe surprisingly, this is still tight. If you plug in this optimal critic into this NWJ bound, it is still the correct uh, mutual information. So this is uh, the optimal critic is uh, perhaps one plus the log of the uh, basically the density ratio of P Y X over P Y W one. And th this is the same as the uh, last slide. But uh, perhaps interestingly is well, like the derivation of the info and C bound which you see um, basically a lot in the kind of a contrastive learning and in a kind of a contrastive context. And this is a very interesting bound because it lets basically let, it lets G to depend additionally on other samples, on basically independent samples, X2 to K sample from PX. And we set basically this G in uh, the NWJ bound, which is the same as F before, but I used a different notation for only this side. So basically we let G, uh, which depends on both Y and X1 to K. Uh, and remember X, so X1 here is from the same pair as Y. So X1 and Y are sample from PXY and X2 to K are independent samples, which are independent from this Y. 
And by having this particular form of G, uh, we recover basically this very uh, interesting kind of um, bound called the info NC bound, which is a kind of a normalized uh, quantity, um, that this kind of log normalized uh, quantity. Um, where you sample p x one y from the true drawing, and a bunch of independent or uh, in the kind of uh, contrastive literature they are called the negative samples, uh, so they are not paired with y. And uh, uh, inside you have basically the log of the exponential of the critic f, and divided by the kind of the normalized um, average of all of these x k. So when we try to maximize this lower bound. Uh, essentially, we want to basically maximize uh, the kind of affinity uh, between uh, x, y, and y. So we want f to learn that x, y, and y are from the same pair, and we want to decrease this uh, from the uh, basically from the denominator. So we want f to be able to uh, distinguish that x, k, y, when x, k is from uh, basically k equals to two to k, are not from the same pair. And the optimal critic here is again. Uh, it's the same as the UVA bound. It's basically, again, this likelihood P or Y given X. And uh, we can view this uh, even, uh, so influence C and UVA as uh, basically an approximation because really if you uh, compute uh, in a different side, different form, the first term of influence C is pretty much this term. And the denominator here uh, becomes kind of an estimate of the uh, intractable uh, normalizing constant here. So basically that's a kind of a long way of saying maybe the uh, many of the mutual information bonds are very related. And uh, from all of these different changes, we still have to cover what we started. Uh, yeah. So now, now the question is um, basically, that in practice, these estimators still aren't very favorable uh, because uh, people observe that uh, for these kind of uh, unbiased, um, uh, say tractable UBA and this kind of NWJ bounds, they typically have very high variance. Uh, even with an optimal critic, uh, for instance, when we plug in the optimal critic to the NWJ bound, we recall something like this, uh, we, we, we recover something like this. And, so for the plus pairs, uh, they are from the basically PXY. Uh, the negative pairs are from PXPY. And so the, again, using kind of the, maybe the contrastive uh, learning kind of notation. And so the first term we see, this is precisely the um, mutual information estimate, but this is optimal critic, so it's not um, tractable. So this is the basically the optimal error. So this first term already recovers uh, the, uh, the true mutual information, at least an unbiased estimate. But the second term here doesn't, uh, well, it, it has uh, expectation zero. Uh, but the, the variance of this term is uh, basically kind of the high uh, divergence uh, divided by M between uh, PXY and PXPY. Uh, and uh, we can show that it's basically exponential in the true KL divergence uh, between PXY and PXPY. And they recall here that basically this KL divergence is precisely the mutual information. So actually the variance of NWJ uh, even with optimal critic is uh, pretty much exponential in the true KL divergence uh, or in the true mutual information. So basically if we want to set M to reduce the variance, we need to set M to be exponential in the true mutual information. And um, I won't go into the details here, but the, the DV, another um, biased multi color estimate, um, similar to the kind of the UBA. So it, it is biased. So uh, this is intractable. So the only kind of confirmation we can make for it is biased. And uh, um, one can show that similarly, the kind of uh, bias is uh, of the same order as this one. So it's also exponential uh, in the true mutual information. And perhaps the more, more interesting the influence kind of bound uh, because it is a kind of a normalized uh, kind of ratio uh, 
a more kind of a self normalizing point is something kind of a similar type of estimator. What can I see that it's actually always less than log k? So basically, if the mutual information, the true mutual information is larger than log k, where k is the number of samples you used, then basically this means that it can also be highly biased. And really, again, you need to let k to be exponential of the true mi uh, in order for this term to uh, be larger than the true mi. So all of these are require the number of samples exponential in the true mutual information. And this is a plot from this paper on variational bonds of mutual information from 2019. And basically, it, it considers the NWJ and the info SC um, estimators we discussed on the last slide. In this column, we have the NWJ. In this column, we have the info SC. And as we uh, probably expect, the NWJ is not very biased. Uh, info SCE is biased. But the variance of NWJ is high, the variance of info NCE is comparatively much lower. But uh, as a function of mean squared error, and the both estimators have a very similar uh, profile. And they propose to have some kind of interpolation between the NWJ and the info NCE bound uh, using a factor alpha. And this seems to show uh, some uh, reduction in the MSE in the absolute sense. But as we can see still, uh, no matter the, what, what batch size you use, um, basically as the mutual information increases on the x axis, uh, the kind of, since the scale on the, on the y axis is uh, exponential. So basically as mutual information increases linearly, the MSD still increases uh, exponential. And so this, uh, this is, address, this is formally addressed in a paper called The Formal Limitations on the Measurement of Mutual Information uh, by McAllister uh, from uh, 2018. And I think it's published in uh, 2020, I think. Um, so the theorem uh, considers any uh, high confidence uh, distribution free uh, lower bound on the entropy. So uh, formally it says, let this B estimator be any lower bound on the entropy of X with confidence parameter delta, such that for discrete PF, so HX, PX here are for discrete uh, PMF, with probability at least one minus delta over a draw from PX, we have that hx is greater than b um, one and well b well the, the first term is the samples you draw the second term is constant. So basically, we have a family of lower bounds that are of a very high um, probability actual lower bounds on the um, entropy. So basically, this means that the lower bound should be of uh, high quality, um, but also are you know are high confidence lower bound. And so for any such bound, and for uh, some uh, not 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 so important numbers, so for large n and k, with probability at least one minus delta minus uh, one point zero one over k, over the draw of x and one to n, and we have that this new uh, this uh, entropy bound b is less than or equal to the log of uh, 2k. So there is also this kind of um, log uh, log n dependence uh, for k, k is a free parameter. Yeah, it's free, yeah. It's a free parameter. So you can choose this uh, to tune the probability. Oh. Yeah. So basically it says that um, with a probability slightly lower, uh, well, by tuning k large, slightly lower than this um, confidence level, right? Um, this bound has to be log than uh, has to be has to be less than uh, this uh, log uh, term, which is of order log uh, n, basically. Uh, so this pretty pretty much says that any high confidence distribution free lower bound on entropy is also high confidence small. Uh, or, or less than the order of a log, basically. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't think, uh, I have the proof here, but I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, because it's not a, so I, I, maybe it's interesting in some, for some people, but for, well, um, I don't think it happened. Like that. So basically this, uh, this is a kind of a formal uh, limitation for discrete X and uh, on, on the entropy. So in this case, because um, we have a bound on HX already, uh, no, we have some uh, bad news, we can say, for HX. Uh, this also translates to mutual information because for discrete x and y, uh, again, the mutual information is given here. And it's because in the discrete case, any entropy is positive. Uh, this mutual information term <coughs> is uh, basically less than or equal to the entropy. So any um, lower bound on the mutual information is also a lower bound on the entropy. And so in a, in a more, maybe a more extreme case, when the y is just x, uh, you, is, you are essentially estimating, uh, well, any, any mutual information estimator is exactly the entropy estimator. Uh, so uh, basically the theorem applies to lower bounds on the mutual information uh, for discrete case. And in a conditional case, they say that basically uh, um, the, uh, Basically, they claim that the mutual information in the conditional case has a very close connection uh, to the uh, mutual information in the discrete case uh, because the continuous mutual information is basically the supremum of the discrete mutual information, where basically the way you get the discrete mutual information is by discretizing x and y into some discrete sets, into basically into bins. You want to uh, make the continuous distribution. You, you basically aggregate uh, maybe this range, all of these values into bins, and you form two discrete uh, estimator. Uh, th sorry, discrete random variable cx and c uh, dash y. And uh, so basically, they are very closely connected. And so when you have a, so basically that they claim that uh, this all log uh, all log n upper bound still applies. For the continuous x y, um, uh, but but uh, this kind of this kind of analysis doesn't hold for continuous x y. So it's only when you have done this, and uh, oh, so when you so basically considering this kind of entropy uh, doesn't make too much sense in the continuous. Case. Intuitively, is it related to um, the little down to using the empirical? Okay, so when you do the calculation of the empirical measures, is it roughly similar to computing um, a discrete mutual information? Is that what it boils down? Uh, because all, the, all these log m terms appear when you start looking at um, entropies of discrete variables mm. and they get the same value. Yeah. Yeah. So is that roughly how it's done? Like they view the calculation on the sample as the mutual entropy of discrete me uh, measures, and that's where the, um, the log n puts up. Mm, I, uh, they, they, they did it more like in a way of, uh, say, like estimating the entropy of a discrete distribution, and they say, well, uh, the kind of the mutual. But n there yeah. is the number of samples, yeah. not the number of values of the discrete distribution, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah, and it's the number of samples. Use yes, and so the thing I think they what they are doing essentially is to say that when you have maybe a low end, the kind of the distinguish the, the distinguishment uh, between a kind of a, a distribution with a less with with, met, with with a with a low number of uh, supports is not that far from so basically when you have a very low end, maybe the mutual information or what the entropy. Um, lower bound estimator cannot distinguish uh, uh, basically an, a distribution uh, that has a low number of support uh, with a distribution that has a large number of support. So basically what I do is uh, for maybe infinite support even or for like uh, maybe if they support it on Z, they truncate based on the, they truncate the tail to have only uh, 2K and squared uh, uh, 
number of uh, basically the number of elements in the support. So it seems it does sort of boil down to um, doing a calculation on essentially a discrete measure with the number of samples as its number of things, something like that. Yes, I think yeah, I think that's indeed uh, what, what's happening. I think basically the, 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 this is where it came from, but uh, you, you, yeah, I think you are more from a mutual information point of view where you say, is this uh, directly what's happening in a, uh, in, in an empirical kind of uh, sense? Is it a, is, is the bins actually just the, you know, the data bins or something? I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but uh, indeed uh, this kind of proof does have the, the idea is basically, yeah, we have a small number of data you also basically you just reduce the number of bins, um, which should not make too much difference. So is that relevant for the kind of application we are dealing with, where basically we do have some information about T X Y? That we have some, you know, some some known margin, all at least, or kind of things like that. Uh, yeah. So so I'll I'll talk a bit about that mm -hmm. later, and uh, so it uh, seems that it uh, this is only for really the kind of the distribution. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Very important distribution for you tonight. Yeah. So I'll talk a bit about that yeah. later. Yeah. So um so why does the contrastive bounds still work in practice? So all the distribution free contrastive bounds such as info and C, and why do they even work in the contrastive uh, in the representation learning? Uh, so um this paper again on mutual information uh, well another another paper uh, on mutual information maximization for representation learning. A study is this problem, and uh, they, their answer is that basically tighter bounds on the mutual information uh, doesn't necessarily translate into better representations. And uh, so for instance here, uh, you can see in plot A and B, um, NWJ is unbiased, so it should be tighter. Uh, info and CE is, uh, as we see, is uh, definitely biased. Uh, when the mutual information is high, and you can see that the estimated the mutual information uh, during the training definitely shows that uh, optimizing using NWJ achieves higher mutual information. But uh, when you measure them in terms of uh, the uh, some kind of downstream um, um, classification task, the informacy estimator has a better uh, uh, Kind of classification accuracy. So, from a representation point of view, a representation learning point of view, uh, the informacy estimator is better. And the second thing is that uh, if the encoders are immersible, um, which should not change MI because MI actually has a kind of property that it is uh, basically uh, unchanged when you have a immersible or uh, I think maybe a homomorphism. Uh, type of uh, transformation. So basically, when you use multiple encoders in uh, representation learning, this should not change MI at all. But uh, uh, in practice, they actually show that uh, this can uh, basically improve or worsen the representation. But so so basically, all, in, in the class of multiple encoders, there are still good and bad encoders in the uh, representation learning concept. So their conclusion is that the connection with the Infomax principle. Uh, for these uh, representation learning methods, maybe very loose. And so uh, uh, an alternative kind of uh, um, interpretation, interpretation is metric learning, which I'll not go into details, but so basically um, this is the kind of um, answer they have for the uh, empirical success of uh, contrastive learning and uh, kind of, uh, uh, representation learning methods. So uh, back to the, maybe the, um, estimation of mutual information. And so this is the first um, kind of uh, solution to what we have seen before is that uh, admittedly this kind of uh, high quality distribution free lower bounds, but these three, you know, like there are three you know, conditioning uh, things here. So it's, it's a, it needs to be, you know, high quality distribution free and it has to be lower bound. Well, this, uh, this kind of thing may not exist, uh, it, it's possible to maybe obtain more accurate mutual information estimation without a lower bound guarantee. And uh, so in, again, this formal limitations paper, um, they proposed basically 
uh, because the mutual information is the difference of entropies between the basically the entropy, the unconditional and the conditional entropy. Uh, they propose to directly use the two different estimators of the entropy. And the difference of them would be an estimator on the mutual information. And to estimate the entropy, it's basically the kind of uh, infimum of the cross entropy or in a more um, written out form is the infimum over QX of basically E data from PX, the minus of log, to, uh, log uh, QX. So this is, this is uh, perhaps uh, from a, maybe a gentry modeling point of view, this is really like um, minimizing the negative log life. So this is basically training, training, a, training a probabilistic model. Uh, one, one unconditional and one condition. And so basically when you train the conditional models, you directly get uh, a, um, uh, an estimate on the mutual information, but it is not guaranteed to be a lower bound or upper bound. Uh, and I think uh, the kind of uh, one of the problem uh, not discussed in their paper, I think is basically you still have to train these kind of models. And that, that may be difficult in itself. So uh, they, they, they did a very uh, simple kind of, uh, I think, uh, 2D Gaussian. I think, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I think uh, kind of a 2D Gaussian example um, where um, they show that basically, indeed, this, this, this difference of entropy um, estimator, basically the red and the orange one, where red is the correct family, so Q is in a correct family, and there's also a misspecified model family uh, in orange, and they show that in both uh, cases, um, uh, the, the, the mutual information estimation is much tighter compared to the, uh, the other estimators, which all kind of live around uh, log K, uh, log, log N, I should say. Um, well, this is perhaps uh, not, uh, not too surprising because uh, you are getting rid of the lower bound guarantee. Uh, but uh, indeed, uh, they, they, they do live near the gene of flow mode. So uh, this is perhaps uh, um, not so good news for the other estimators as well. And uh, the second uh, kind of part I should uh, say is basically mutual information estimation is also uh, can be there, there can be much better methods when we have at least some uh, tractable uh, densities. And in particular, it's very important, I think, uh, based on the literature I read, it's very important to at least have a tractable marginal. So maybe we now consider in the generative model context, and it's very important that the at least this prior PZ is known. So we need to know what, what it is, the tractable density. And we have another model PX, you know, Y, which may or may not be uh, tractable. Uh, so when PX given Z is tractable, such as in the case of BAEs, um, since initial information is this, so it's the same as before, but it's written in the expectation form. Um, we have this term already. And we can estimate based on the samples. So the only problem reduces to the second term only. And uh, from a um, generative modeling point of view, this is precisely trying to estimate the log likelihood. And so you have the uh, classic uh, evidence lower bound, evidence or, or uh, upper bound, uh, elbow and uh, EUBO kind of uh, sandwiching. Um, uh, actually, sandwiching inequality. Uh, basically, uh, this paper, including transformation estimation with annealed and energy based bounds, they consider um, a more basically a more general class of elbow and EUBO, uh, where they use the notation P target uh, to be any distribution that has X in it and Z. Uh, EXT means extended, so Z can be in an extended space. And the Q prop is basically uh, X, uh, Z, X uh, given X. So the only requirement on this kind of general formulation is that uh, basically 
the normalizing constant of p um, x z. So basically, the integral when you integrate out the entire uh, extended uh, latent z, it reduces to p x. So with only this requirement, you have a sandwich uh, um, between uh, sandwiching of the log p x. And uh, when you choose a particular kind of um, extended uh, proposal and um, target, this reduces to the maybe a more familiar uh, importance weighted also encoder uh, kind of lower and upper bound. Um, maybe the lower bound is more familiar, but it turns out in neutral information, the upper bound is more useful uh, because uh, this, because it, it has some canceling effect. Uh, so this is the upper bonds are more useful. So why is it more useful? Because, of... uh, because uh, it's because uh, this this part this first uh, th this term is from the true. Um, it's because this 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 is the true. Um, this this is the true. This is the true true density. Right? This is the true uh, z given x. And as a result, uh, when you basically, you, you have another subtraction term here, right? And so in this, uh, in, in the expectations, uh, this x and z1 and this xz are the same distribution. But when you do this kind of difference, there's one term px given z that gets canceled with this term here. And so this only leaves PZ uh, on, on, in the, in the uh, numerator. And so when PX given Z is intractable, um, this difference here cancels out PX given Z only when you use the upper bound. When you use the lower bound, you can't do this uh, subtraction inside the expectations because the expectations are completely different. Yeah, so that's the reason why. But uh, when P X Z is tractable, uh, both of these are tractable. So, so, so there's no difference uh, here. So the, the, both both can be used uh, uh, when, when, when we uh, when we say in a VAE. And well, I think maybe the more important thing in their paper is like the, a new important something. Yeah. And uh, again, it comes from the fact that a new important something is a, is a method that uh, gives you an extended uh, space in Z. And they also did a bunch of uh, basically combining AIS with uh, uh, this kind of importance weighting idea. So uh, maybe a more like a combination of both. Uh, there are many more things in their paper, but the math is, can get very confusing there. And so I will only show the result and for the details, um, please refer to their paper. And so what, um, what if then, what if PX given Z is uh, intractable, uh, such as in the case of GANs where the generative model doesn't have a tractable uh, distribution? Then um, again, define some kind of critic function T of phi, uh, which Use, which is used to distinguish between pz given x uh, with uh, q theta z given x. So it tries to distinguish between the true posterior and uh, the uh, basically encoder. And this is again very, uh, maybe, maybe slightly confusing, uh, but um, basically uh, this kind of p target um, distribution now has both x, this extended z space, and also s, uh, which is kind of the selection, uh, which, which z you're going to use, basically. And this target distribution uh, has s basically uh, uniformly distributed from one to k. But for the proposal, we want the s to match the kind of the posterior uh, here. So, the proposal distribution here actually is the same. It's the product of the previous uh, proposal uh, from the IWAY kind of uh, 
uh, in the previous slide, times uh, this term, where this term basically is S given Z and X is a normalized uh, kind of uh, uh, ratio uh, that is basically, that, that basically tries to, um, well, this is basically a categorical kind of distribution that assigns uh, for a particular S, uh, the weight that is, uh, no, that is proportional to uh, what the critic uh, thinks. So the belief of the uh, critic. And uh, when you plug these in, uh, maybe, maybe these are not very easy to understand, but uh, so after some calculations, and when you plug these in, you have the kind of generalized highway bound, which they uh, derive which is the sum of the barber uh, alcohol lower bound plus uh, this contrastive term, which is, not, uh, which is not quite the same as before, but very, very similar. And so this term has a kind of uh, um, log k uh, kind of um, order. So this is a not very good news, but this is also um, improving upon the previous uh, lower bounds. And so this has kind of a, maybe a nice interpretation of uh, basically a lower bound plus a very uh, contrastive term similar to influence. And so maybe some, uh, just some uh, high level summaries of this. When K is one, this reduces to the, uh, bar, uh, to the BA lower bound here, basically the second term vanishes. And when basically, when Q, so when Q is the prior precisely, this reduces to the info and C lower bound. Because recall that uh, previously we said that the info and C lower bound is distribution free. So it doesn't even need P, PZ, um, but that it can only go as far as log K. And that is indeed the case when we plug uh, PZ into Q here. So this first term vanishes, and the second term becomes uh, precisely info and C. So basically, uh, when you have a PZ uh, compared to the influence case, you can definitely improve uh, upon influence much uh, better. And the optimal critic uh, in this case is uh, precisely uh, the log of the ratio between P and Q. And in this case, it's pretty much the uh, importance weight uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of I way. Uh, in an importance weighted autoencoder uh, context. And in this case, uh, this general, so basically when the critic is optimal, uh, the um, generalized I way lower bound is equal to the I way lower bound. And uh, uh, to summarize all of these, basically the uh, inequality goes the uh, lowest low, lower bound, is the worst, uh, the uh, loosest lower bound is the Barber uh, Agakov. And then there's the generalized I way, which is basically when you don't know P, X, Q, and Z, uh, such as in the case of GANs. And then that is less than the uh, I way case, which is when you know uh, what P, X, Q, and Z is, such as in the case of um, mm. VAEs. And, but uh, maybe the slightly more pessimistic news is that when you do all of these, uh, at the end of the day, you still can only gain up to log K. Uh, from the BA lower bound, which we uh, introduced at the very beginning. And so this is, uh, this is where they um, start to do much more uh, with the uh, new importance sum. And that they, they say that in their results, uh, that basically when you do a new importance something, uh, which basically you convert the number of samples K uh, into the intermediate states in a, a new importance something, uh, you get a much uh, better kind of uh, um, efficiency. And they claim that uh, this uh, increase uh, is uh, instead of log uh, like log it's log logarithmic in K, they claim is a linear in T, which T is the length of the um, AIS chain, so the annual importance of the chain. And then they, they show that basically with a lower uh, computation cost, uh, using AIS, you can get uh, tight, uh, lower and upper bound of mutual information um, using AIS, basically, uh, at lower computation cost than the I-way 
uh, which uses say one million um, particles. And um, another kind of part uh, they, they have done is they have also derived energy, like uh, again, based on a new input and something ideas, they have also um, proposed a new bound called the, uh, basically there are two names. It's either, uh, well, basically it's mine and AIS, uh, AIS uh, uh, which is uh, using AIS. And so they generalized the AIS idea even for the case where PX and Z is unknown. And so you can use AIS to also train the critics. And so in, 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 in this table, they pretty much um, show results similar to this uh, kind of uh, um, plot on the right, where you have, again, the VA lower bound as the lowest and the GIWAE and the IWAE here. Uh, but uh, when you use, and, and so basically this log K improvement uh, constrains uh, the IWAE and GIWAE uh, kind of estimators here. Uh, but they are indeed they are already uh, improvements upon the like uh, influence C because at least uh, there is a actual kind of a lower bound uh, governing here, uh, which is maybe already far from zero. Uh, but their improvement mainly comes from using a new import or something. Uh, but there are many details, so unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to uh, cover them. Uh, but uh, the kind of um, main ideas are all based on pretty much already the estimators I've introduced and uh, also importance weighting and uh, uh, this kind of a generalized I weight kind of idea. But uh, when you add the uh, annual importance something in, they show that uh, you really get, get gain much um, tighter uh, estimates. <laughs> And which seems to break the log, log, logarithmic order um, only when you use AIS, basically. And uh, so here are a list of uh, references which I used, and uh, that's the end of my talk. So I have to take any questions. So, what do you call on the AIS? They, they, you, you mean like uh, in this qual in this qualitative they do show it's a, a very tight basic uh, well, for 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 I mean, maybe similar. well theoretically they they they, they did they, they 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 have some results uh but I think the thing is uh, when you use AIS they didn't get the bounds to be also strict as well. So it's like when you use it as maybe the lower bound become maybe not a um, real lower bound as well. But they say, yeah, but the maybe. What do you mean by that? So they don't have lower bound in the area? So they, they cannot bound the lower bound as I think? Mm. I think I think I think uh, I don't remember which direction it is, uh, but I think they they didn't lose the guarantee on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, they they did they they they, they, ha they do have a lot of um, they do have theoretical results, and they seem to uh, say that the theoretical results show that uh, this is also fine, um, that they don't lose too much of the guarantee. But it, it's a small thing I think they 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 use. It's not it's not very important. But they say that that thing can cause the bound to be um, not strict. But I, I think I think that's. Maybe. So do they use it for representation learning, or not? Like do they just uh, no, use it to quantify the? Yeah, I think they only use it to quantify the uh, bounds in the in the generative models, such as the uh, yeah, yeah. VAE and so. When I saw AIS with thirty thousand or ten thousand times set, a good luck differentiate on the two nights. So they were not. Yeah. Yeah, so so the, the, really, I think this is only for computing and uh, mm -hmm. estimating the um, AIS and also optimizing the critics, I think. 
um, may, maybe you can also train uh, the model with these bounds. Yeah. It can be bypassed so the 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 when you use AS, it's linear. I'm not sure if that's pretty much the the views of AS literature, like ideas. But uh, there, so, so it's possible to bypass the theoretical limitations. Oh, well, the theoretical limitations is for basically when you don't know anything about PX that. Uh, so when you, at least here in this paper, they always assume that you at least know PZ. So that, that seems like a oh, very important. Uh, yeah, so basically, you at least have some idea of the one of the marginal, which is maybe the difficult thing because uh, you, you can't, uh, it's difficult to estimate that marginal uniform to join. So, um, so they assume you at least know what marginal. And uh, so, so that already can reduce maybe to some, to some extent uh, um, the range of things you can use this for. So, they only use, I think, for generative models where you have uh, latent Z. You know the prior PZ, and then you generate it so using maybe the uh, probabilistic or or just some kind of generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and but but yeah, uh, here's a list of uh, references. I think uh, in particular the slides are uh, definitely based on this uh, slide and this blog by Artem uh, 